You know, I've been very fortunate to have had a lifelong career in show business. The attributes of a successful career include discipline, professionalism, uh, dedication to your craft, a constant desire to achieve high excellence in everything you do. Now, all these factors and so many more are the building blocks of a successful career. And as with any career, it all gets down to how you were trained and taught in your youth to establish those building blocks of your foundation. My teacher, my mentor, was Andy Williams. I studied how he interacted with an audience, how he sang, how he conducted himself professionally, the sincerity when he spoke on stage. I mean, this guy was a class act all the way. And he expected greatness from everyone around him. Now, my brothers were already established as regulars on his television show, and he eventually wanted to introduce me. He didn't just want to put me on the show. I mean, I had to audition. So I worked really, really hard practicing at home. I mean, I was only five years old at the time when I made my debut. Oh my Come on up here. What is your name? Donnie. Donnie? Yes, sir. Well, how old are you? Five. Five, and you sing along with your brothers, huh? Yes, sir. Do you know, uh, yes, sir, that's my baby? Yes, sir. <laughs> once all the sweetest, yes, sir, that's my baby now. I don't mean maybe. Yes, sir, that's my baby now. Oh, do you know? Yes, oh, yeah, sir, go. that's my baby now. Oh, that's too much. Now, Little did I know that after my debut performance, Andy would put my brothers and me to the test. And he challenged us to be better every single time we were on a show. He didn't settle for the same thing over and over again. We had to top it each time. In fact, it was a kind of a running joke that Andy and his team would say, what can we challenge them with next week? And let's see if they can do this. And let's see if they can do that. Uh, th there was a dance routine that all of my older brothers learned and Andy wanted me to be a part of it. And I tried so hard. I didn't quite succeed, but I tried. I mean, come on, I was only six years old when I did this. You might think, oh, that poor little kid having to work so hard. Why would Andy put him through that? Yes, my brothers and I worked really, really hard. But little did I know, those were the building blocks of a lifelong career. After weeks of endless rehearsing, there was another dance routine that Andy wanted me to do with my brothers. And I was able to keep up a little bit better this time. Check it out. So after that workout, Andy said, guys, next week, you're all going to play pianos. <laughs> okay, so we learn how to play piano. Yeah. 
And if that wasn't enough, he said, what if you guys played banjos? <laughs> what? <laughs> we said, okay, we'll play banjos. Yes, Andy really pushed us to the limits every time we appeared on his show. And I'll never forget one of his Christmas shows. I, uh, I thought, okay, this is gonna be really easy. All I have to do is learn this song with my brothers. I mean, it's full of complex harmonies, but it's just singing, no dancing. We sang it with Andy and his brothers. Me, oh my, not a cloud of gray. Me, oh my, what a happy day. Snow is snowing, winds are blowing, roosters growing, let's get going. We're knowing we will have a happy day. Happy holiday, happy holiday, happy holiday, happy holiday while the merry bells keep ringing. Happy holiday to you. It's the holiday season. It's the holiday season. And just when I thought that this Christmas show was only going to be about singing, <laughs> Andy threw this at us. Uh, you know, the Osmond brothers are always amazing me. For instance, a week ago, they had never been on skates. Just one week ago. Now they're going to do a number for you that you won't believe. It's just great. And so you forgive me if I simply go my chest and say, one more two, one more two, one more, one more. Yes, he pushed us to the limits, but I'll always be grateful to Andy for teaching me what it means to do not just your best, but to constantly try to do better each and every time you perform on stage and to never settle for mediocrity. And with all the dancing and the, the production that the Andy Williams show had, it always got back to the core of what Andy and that show was all about. It was Andy's voice and what a voice it was. The days of wine and roses Laugh and run away Like a child at play Through a meadowland Toward a closing door, a door marked nevermore that wasn't there before. Andy Williams, there's never going to be another one like him. So thank you, Andy, wherever you are, for all the training that you gave me. May each day in the week be a good day. May the Lord always watch over you. And may all of your hopes turn to wishes. And may all Day in the month be a good day. 
May you make friends with each one you meet And may all of your daydreams be memories And may all of your memories be sweet The weeks turn to months And the months into years There'll be sadness and joy There'll be laughter and tears But one thing I pray To heaven above May all of your days Be a day full of love May each day in the year be a good day May each dawn find you happy and gay And may all of your days be as lovely As the one you share May each day in your life be a good day and good As a singer, I find it interesting that people don't think about some of the other elements that go into a performance. When I perform with other musicians, they have to have music to read from, music to play, and that music is usually an arrangement, an orchestration that somebody has created for a given number of instruments to accompany the vocalist. Sometimes if it's a jazz group, they will improvise. I'm going to sing this song in this key and you just sort of fake it. But most of the time, there is an orchestration that is created. In today's world, orchestrations can be created digitally on a computer. The parts can be printed out pretty quickly and it is saved digitally. Or in some cases, people perform from uh, small computers. They'll read from a screen. And that way you can make changes in the music, make vari variations. But before the advent of the digital age, music had to be written out in a manuscript. It had to be hand copied. Then they would have to individually create parts for every musician. If it's a combo, a six-piece combo, a three-piece, or if it's a 17-piece big band, a concert orchestra, or a symphony orchestra, which could be 60, 80, or 100 different parts for every single musician to play. So this music is a portion of orchestrations that were created all for Andy Williams. Andy Williams passed away, I don't remember the exact year, but his family gave me this music library with the understanding that I would help to keep this music alive, make it available for other people, and that is our mission here at the Great American Songbook Foundation. So all of this music exists for the purpose of people using, investigating, learning from, learning about Andy Williams and keeping his legacy alive and the American popular song alive. And this collection is quite extraordinary because it spans most of Andy Williams' career. And so these orchestrations are arrangements that were done for his commercial recordings, ones that were done for his television series. He had a very long-running television variety show, so it's Andy's own arrangements of his songs, plus arrangements done for all of his guests, ranging from, from Bobby Darin to Eddie Fisher to Martha Ray to Judy Garland to you name it. It was a who's who 
of show business. So we have all of those arrangements. And then his live performance charts. For example, when he uh, sang Moon River on the Academy Awards, his recording of Moon River came out shortly thereafter and immediately became a bestseller, and it is the song most associated with Andy Williams. So we have a great number of arrangements of Moon River. We have the original arrangement that was done for his recording. We have arrangements that he did on television. We have arrangements that he did in concert, in different keys, different size orchestras, and they're all here. And it's quite exciting to be able to see the different ways that he sang uh, a song such as Moon River. And this I just... I spotted the title there and I pulled it off the, the shelf. So right here on top is a conductor part. It's just sort of a sketch for the conductor to use to conduct the rest of the orchestra while Andy sings it. And then the rest of this would be the individual parts that were played by the musicians. This is another conductor part. It says optional ending Moon River, which means that he might have been doing it in one place where he was going into another song. Another time they decided to end with Moon River just uh, with this arrangement. And you can learn things like um, repeat intro if necessary, no mutes uh, on the violins. There's all these different directions. And most of this music is hand copied and is manuscript material. Even though string parts might be duplicated because a lot of uh, string players are gonna play the same part. This is the choir part. Um, this is a tacit sheet which is telling the musician that they're not going to be playing this arrangement because if you say, okay, we're going to play Moon River and the musicians start looking for their music and they say, I can't find my part, they have a tacit sheet that tells them that they are not playing on this song. So even a tacit sheet was important uh, to tell a musician what they were going to do. The other thing that Andy Williams is most connected with is Christmas music. Uh, he recorded a number of Christmas albums, and a song that was actually written by his conductor, George Weil, is called It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year. So we have that arrangement here. I see this big, big envelope here. Oh, my gosh. Plus other envelopes. This is there's actually there are three very large envelopes that all say it's the most wonderful time of the year. And this large envelope probably has the original manuscript full score that was created for that song. And this music is oversized in that if you want to make a photocopy of it, saved it, um, you have to get a special scanner because these scores are too large to uh, copy in a regular scanner. So this is a manuscript uh, score for It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year that is scored for a big band without strings. This is the arrangement, I believe, that he recorded and sang on television that is for a symphony orchestra, which is why the paper is larger and it lists all the different instruments. So this is just one example of all the amazing scores that we have here just with Andy Williams' music. And you can see how much space all of this takes up. So this is just one collection of quite a number of collections that we have, and we're very excited to have it. And we're most excited not only about preserving it, but helping to keep this music played and to keep it present and to share it with young people and to keep it current. Because the one thing we know about the Great American Songbook is that it is timeless. So thanks for sharing me in this exploration of the music of Andy Williams.